Welcome back to the curvaceous bounty of Sin City on VegasOnNetRadio.com. The final frontier of free speech where we can say and do talk about whatever the fuck we want, including yellow chunky spooge. Yeah, but we're going to get off that topic. <laughs> get back on the topic. Desiree loves it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Jello I have um, an- another thing that I was going to ask you, you guys, what, what you, how you feel about it. I was reading some um, stuff, you know, about all the protests going on about, you know, uh, you know how I can't breathe. Black Lives Matter, yeah, and whatnot. Well, I'm all about, you know, bringing awareness and, you know, protesting for, you know, we all deserve better rights and whatnot, stand against. But there was um, back on the East Coast, there was a bunch of people lined up um, protesting, and they were blocking a freeway. Both that's, sides of a freeway. That's illegal. Um, mm-hmm. And the police were there. They weren't arresting them. They were letting them protest. But I have a big issue with that. It makes me angry a little bit because yeah. I'm all about protesting, right, by the way. And I think if you want to protest, then go make a good statement. Like, go block, like, fucking shopping mall parking lots and shit like that. Like, yeah, not you know, freeway. hit America where it matters, like, in the pockets. <laughs> but, but, you know. It, just a really quick, though, but. A lot of um, what the protesters have been doing, and especially if you want to go back to, and I'll, I'll let you continue, but especially in there. Ferguson, is that they were, their act of protesting was hurting the people that they're trying yeah. to well, that was, protest that for yeah. and, and that protect. That, that so it's the same thing here. Yeah. That are blocking the freeways, you know, out of, you know, mm-hmm. the, you know they're protesting, and I get that they're, um, you know, doing it, um peacefully i guess it, you know yep. they're not being violent or you know not rioting or being ridiculous and breaking the fucking they, shit they also can't but, block public throughways but, including right, the freeway to be and on that... a huge freeway you know where people you don't know who's in that traffic like people could possibly be losing their job because they can't make it to work losing their you know, life people could <laughs> you know, be on their way to the hospital or something could just be have in a tragedy, their children could be hurt. Like you don't know who's in that traffic or what they're trying to get to. Right. You know, and then you've so you've not <laughs> you're you're protesting for a better America, but yet you're hurting your fellow innocent people. Like it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't yeah. make like two wrongs don't make a right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It no. doesn't they don't. I believe you have the right to publicly protest, and Absolutely. you can public protest wherever you want, as long as you are, A, not impeding on the civil rights of others, and blocking my way to work is impeding on my civil right. And, um... And, and and blocking my freedom of commerce, which means if I can't get into the store I want to shop at because you're making an ass of yourself protesting, we're going to have a problem, because... Your right to protest does not impede my right to shop. Exactly. Right. Doesn't impede my right to get to work. It doesn't impede my right to have a peaceful and calm day. So I don't need you shouting in my face as I walk past you. And some of them you also have your right impeded by, you know, having your vehicle burned and right. Right. Um, Your your store that that you and your family work so hard to build. Right. You know, completely looted and destroyed and windows broken, set on fire and yeah, that's yeah. You know. it doesn't make any sense to me why people would think that they're gonna, you know, protest these the wrongdoings of police officers while Doing while they're committing wrong... crimes, right? Mm-hmm. And like, and not and not even like, not even like like standing in the middle of the freeway crimes. They're burning and looting and killing and maiming people right. like um, you're doing the one thing you're like black people ain't bad and then you go out and act and, terrible and, act and then <laughs> right and, and then you just you continue to perpetrate the culture of being black which means being vi- being a violent well, it's criminal not just black people that are acting asses oh no no, no there's lots it's, of other people doing it you know it. it's a whole you know everybody that that is it, like protesting in a fucked up manner you yeah. know there's a lot of people in seattle there's a lot of people like in california there's people all over the country even in other countries we had in. um really quick let me just share what wendy said and then i want to share something local um wendy of neverland said the thing is civil disobedience that inconveniences people makes news good protests get ignored by the press it's well i happen true, to but... say that <clears throat> martin luther king did not do any sort of civil disobedience that 
uh, looted buildings and burned down yeah. cars and, you know, harassed and assaulted other people. They sat in diners quietly. That was their civil disobedience. And that made the news and changed the world. So did the Million Man March. Like, there were so many things that were huge, had huge impacts on our our history historically you know just huge impacts even like my my biggest hero of all time is is rosa parks one person who refused to change you know a, a place on the bus right it it she did it peacefully it wasn't a big fight she stood up and she for... stood up for what she believed in mm-hmm. and it changed right the you know the way that america views things yeah, like she didn't block a freeway so she didn't <laughs> act an ass you know, you don't have to act in as. Granted, we're, we live in a culture now where there's fucking super. I think all reality TV, TV shows need to be shut down. But we live in a shock culture where everything that's all, you know, big. You act to ask I gotta say, you, gotta, you get attention. My, my right? favorite protesters of this decade so far have been the Occupy movement people who just pitched tents in parks and sat around with signs. Right. Bunch of hippie ass fuckers smoking their pot in Central right. Park right. with big ass signs that said Occupy Wall Street. And they got just as much media as true. these they violent did. protesters. And they, are. they did have, I mean, there were some, some instances of, you know, maybe a little bit of civil disorder. In some, a couple arrests, but I mean, nothing, you know, like someone's pissing on a tree versus I'm going to set Somebody's, your fucking car on right, fire. Right. Turning oh. your car over and setting it on fire. Yeah. Right. Here, here's my thing. If you're a protester and you're protesting the way people are treating other people and you see people who are supposedly part of your protest group treating other people badly, it is your responsibility to stop that. Exactly. If, if they are, if they are trying, if they are representatives of your movement, you need to make sure that they are the best representatives mm-hmm. possible. And if they're out looting in the name of equality, <laughs> you need to beat some ass. Right. Like, motherfucker, we are not here to break into people's buildings. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> we are here um, to change the world. Wendy <laughs> said, uh, alas, MLK is no longer around. Nowadays, crappy behavior gets attention. Yeah, it's it, true. It's true. But, but there are those instances like out. Occupy. Um, right. The Occupy movement that that did get a lot of attention. There's another, whether I agree or disagree, I disagree. But anyway, whether I agree or disagree on this one, the one right now is the um, the fast food workers protesting for disagree. Um, you know, for the higher wages. I watched it on the news where it was a. Uh, they had one where they were protesting at a McDonald's, and it was a very peaceful protest. And I mean, the only thing I could probably say is if if you do pick a spokesperson for your <laughs> message just come up with other reasons other than because we deserve it make sure they know what they're talking um, about yeah because you don't deserve it if every time i drive away from the fast food window something's missing out of my right, bag or my right. order is wrong or well, you're I rude and don't make my change i, I think the minimum fact, wage the needs minimum to be wage raised, be raised. Definitely. because 15. we need to i mean a good majority of the people that live in america are on welfare because they don't have a livable right minimum wage yeah just period the people work their ass off 40 plus hours a week and still can't afford to pay their rent and bills and buy shoes for their kids. Live, Granted, working poor. Right. Right. But at the same time, like if you, there are certain jobs that are beginner jobs. Right. They're not meant for your lifetime career. Right. career. And that's the reason Absolutely. why they're. And, and, and if you are going to have a career in that field, you have a career in that field in management. Right. Not as right. the guy who works the fucking Do you know, do you know right. what a, I mean, those managers make 50 plus thousand dollars in, yep. in some areas. And, yeah, and yeah. 90% um, of them Oregon, started out on the grill. They started out in the front on the grill. So if you're in that type of position, I agree. I mean, everybody, there, there should be something as far as a living wage. But if you pay a fast food worker $15 an hour, never gonna quit. which there, is there actually will never a be starting, a dollar menu again. There will never, not only, well, they'll, they'll automate all that shit then with robots and crap. I mean, they're, they're not robots, but they'll find a way, a better way to automate it. A lot of it. them have. They're going to find going to put take... kiosks in so that you right. can punch in Absolutely. your Absolutely, like Jack in the Box, or right. now even their drinks in McDonald's are automated. There's a lot of things that they'll do. My father works for a, a paperback book manufacturing company that that's where everyone worked and they got paid great money. And you know what? They keep cutting and cutting and they went to automated systems mm-hmm. to kind of cut out having to you know to pay, pay the wages. people and that's what and that, that's, that's what will happen. happen but to me it's 15 dollars like, an hour it, it's kind of crazy you want 15 dollars an hour a lot of people step out of college and make 15 dollars right. an hour 
If a lot I of were work a, ten years in the field and don't make fifteen dollars. If, if I were um, an admissions individual, at there's a lot of trade schools around here, and you know what? You have better luck getting um, assistance if you're somebody who is not making a living wage. Right. If you want to make more money, there are so many schools around. There are so many programs that you can go into to further yourself. Come or in, go to work. And what do I do to to get myself on the right. management track? What's my career path? What do I do to take the next step? Let, let me tell you people where if you want to make a wage that will blow your fucking mind, you're going to have to work your ass off for it. Right. But get into HVAC. Get into uh, heating and cooling, especially that, in here in hooked, even? you are. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. But all of these HVAC, all of these, um, a lot of the blue collar skilled positions, trades. the skilled trades, what's happening is kids that are graduating now are no longer going into those trades because they want to go into like let Office me design jobs. an app and make five million dollars <laughs> let me i'll go to college but let me walk out and expect to make seventy five thousand from we the get-go even though TV i didn't go to law quick. school <laughs> you know let let me well, hand, hand me this hand me that you know of entitlement people think right give entitled. it to me now and what's going to happen is all of these blue collar positions that none of these kids coming out want to go into um, they're they're going to die down. Yeah, you want to make money. I mean, especially here in Vegas, HVAC or HVAC or whatever, and huge. And a lot of the companies here in town will help put you through school because Absolutely. they need technicians. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of these schools, again, if you're not making money, you can go to them for can free get, most of the time. You can go for free, or you can get assistance, or you can even get. I know you don't want to be inundated with loans, but if you're making like three times as much as you know what you were before, well What's then. That? You know, it, instead of standing there with a the sign saying, give me $15 an hour to make this fries. Yeah. And the, how and about how about I tell you what you can do next to, to earn it? Right. And your blue collar skilled trades uh, training, the colleges that you go to for that community colleges, the HVAC mm -hmm. courses here, things like that. You're not talking about thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of debt. You're talking about ten or fifteen, which right. you can pay off in the first two years you're in your job because you're making thirty, forty thousand dollars to start when you come out. You know, you are making that fifteen dollars an hour that you want to get. Right. I right. think the starting wage for an HVAC kid is, well, is I think fifteen dollars an hour. We live in a lazy hour. society, and a lot of people don't want to work blue collar jobs. Yeah, they, they don't want to be sweating in somebody's or, attic. Right. They right. Right. on the computer and you know be on their phone and be doing you know other shit they don't want to actually work you meanwhile know, be making designing fucking uh games for xbox right. and shit or maybe but you know what go to school and learn how to design the games that's exactly. excellent there you go. but they want because all these people you know they, they design an app and then they go on to make tons of money that, that's stare. a real you know that that's what a lot of people kind of come out and envision how about going to school learning how to design it and then going and from then there. designing it and then but, creating that <laughs> well, anyway but going back to the protest i mean i saw some of them the local ones here on the news and you know it, it just for me mm -hmm. and they were much more peaceful but um, I'm just like, you know, just just find a spokesperson. Give give me some more reasons or give everybody some more reasons other than we deserve it. How uh, do we, we deserve, it? deserve it? You're you dipping do? fries in a fat vat. And when the buzzer buzzes, you're pulling them out, dumping them and shaking it, salt. It doesn't Why require you to go to school for anything. You, you get 15 minutes of training and you then can, you're on the you job. You can that job if when you're that, 14. If that, right. yeah. Right. My first job, 14. Look at the Burger King. You know, it was I nothing. I worked first... when I was 14. 15 and a half. I worked at Carl's Jr. That yeah. was that was where those, I was, those baby. Those jobs are Work, long beginner jobs. Soldiers. They're not like... <laughs> Supposed, and I, they're not meant to be right. they're supposed to show, and a they, lot they're of, supposed to want to push you to and I understand something. a lot of people because you know some of the argument is is that a lot of people um when the economy changed and they lost their jobs or their you know their cushy well paying jobs and the economy changed it they took this and now this is kind of what they're stuck with but again it, you know and a lot of the the older people um who would have used this as a stepping stone or now kind of stuck with this as kind of their quote unquote career. Right. But the economy is turning around. So it's no longer an excuse. Get back out there. It's or again, choice, go into know? what's the next step. There's how many McDonald's here? You know, there's got to be one that has an assistant manager opening. Go in and show them. Here's, you know, why I'm, here's what I did before. Here's my skills that apply to this position. Let's do this. Let's take the next step. Or how about this? How about you go get yourself a small business loan and open a franchise? There you go. 
I mean, there will never be such a thing as a McDonald's that fails. Like, go get a McDonald's franchise. They don't cost that much. Your standard small business loan will get you in. Yeah, but most people, loans are so hard to get nowadays because of the economy and all the But not, and... not not as much for school, though. School's a little bit different. They the, the way they have to go about it is a little bit different, and a lot of the requirements and um, what they're able to give is a little bit different. But there's so many schools around here that even if they don't want to get loans, there's still other avenues. No, I mean, there's small still... Oh, well, small business... Okay, also, small business loans might be a little bit different. It's but... also... I mean, you know, the thing about school is a lot of people invest a lot of money in school and never even... Go. Use it. Use it. Like, <laughs> I have an engineering degree that mm -hmm. I used for 11 months, you know, and now I'm, you know, thousands and thousands, thousands of dollars still in, you know, debt from, right. you know, college loans, but... But here's the difference, Desiree. You don't sit there and say, I should be making $15 an hour for doing this. You go out there and make something happen for yourself. You yeah. get different avenues right. going on. You're very entrepreneurial. And while it may not be specifically in the area that you went to school for, you don't sit back and say, I want this handed to me. You say, how can I go out and make this happen for myself? Right. You know, how can I go out and and make more money and better myself and you know go out and um what what else can i do what can i do next that's true but i also so, don't think that like you know i grew up in a way that nothing was ever handed to me like i had to <laughs> make everything happen right. for myself of course it's never going to happen but i do i do agree i mean I, and i don't really know because i haven't been in the <laughs> the working <laughs> world like for so long what a livable wage would be now. Yeah. I mean, fifteen dollars to me doesn't seem unreasonable in today's society. But for a fast food worker, but I don't know. Like I, I'd have to go back and do the research, like the cost of living, and you know, kind right. Of do all the I, I can tell but you that not... fifteen dollars an hour is barely breaking even in this town right. as a livable wage. Wow. A wage, a wage that to horrible. to flip burgers at McDonald's is really the intention is really, it, and it doesn't really su like support job, supporting you know, your right, you family of burgers. five. It is for the retired any... worker who wants a couple extra bucks. Right the you know the college student and if you exactly. need to support your family then there's the upper level positions that pay well but i do think that any minimum wage job that should be required to pay a livable wage but even if you I mean, can... any minimum wage, wage job if you work 40 hours a week and a lot of places like walmart and all of them they cut your wages so that you don't work 40 hours a week but walmart is the worst like they are one of the the worst for this crime of not paying their employees a livable wage. Now, see, I worked for Walmart, and I actually had a much different experience than what others did. Because when I worked for Walmart, I worked there while I was in college, um, which they were very accommodating to my schedule, which whenever it changed, they worked with it, gave me as many hours as I could without, you know, going up to full-time hours. I still had the option of getting benefits as a part-time employee and it paid more than minimum wage. So I'm not, I, and I, I didn't stay there forever. So, I mean, you know, I'm not there 20 years later and, and complaining that I'm not getting paid enough. Yeah, again, I used it as something to, to supplement what I was doing stone. at the time yeah. as a stepping stone right. and to go from there. Yeah. But I my experience with them was quite the opposite. I mean, they I had worked in retail for years before I ever stepped into Walmart. And they paid more than what I had made at my previous company after being there four years right so well, i don't know when that was but i do know that you know today walmart is one of the biggest recipients of welfare because they do not pay their employees enough they have they actually qualify for food, food stamps. stamps they qualify right. for health insurance like they so are, here but here's what walmart they can do a ridiculous amount of money so there's no reason that if you work you know, a full-time job, even if it is flipping burgers or whatever you can do. I mean, I know people that didn't grow up in it, you didn't ever go to school, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not, you know, through really no fault of their own. They just don't know how to do certain things in life because they weren't, you know, taught. Not that I don't think that people should have their own ambition and, you know, want to, to do those things, but sometimes that's just your lot in life. Yeah. You, but there's no reason that if you work 40 hours a week for somebody that you shouldn't be able to pay rent 
that you shouldn't be able to feed yourself, that, you know, you shouldn't be able to live. I, I, agree. I agree. I mean, I absolutely agree. But there also has to be that, to me, that personal accountability to say, well, okay, so Walmart sucks. And Plus so they're not nowadays, paying a livable money. wage. However, Winco is, and Costco is paying a phenomenal yeah, amount to their so employees. Positions. You know, you have so, to figure Walmart has a lot more, <laughs> like there's mm -hmm. only two Winco's in this town. Right. And they're but on they were just examples. I'm right. just saying there's other there's options not out many. there. There's only three Costco's. Like, you know, there's a lot more Walmarts and there's a lot more right. McDonald's. Like, right. There's there more is... positions. Okay, so, but me... so then within Walmart, there's a lot more positions than I just working a cashier. So, mm -hmm. so let me tell you about a company that I work for that is the most sought after uh, broadcast company to work for in this town. There are people who have been on the waiting list, so to speak, to get a job here for years. They Every time applications open, they submit applications, mm -hmm. they submit applications. We take the most qualified, we take the most qualified. Whenever a position comes open, we take the most qualified. Eventually, one day, we'll have all of the most qualified, and we'll have to go to the next most qualified. Yeah. And that's that's how it's going to work. Meanwhile, it's not like these people are languishing at home. You have to go get a job. You have to pay your bills. Right. I agree the minimum wage needs to be raised. I agree that, what is our minimum wage, Eight seventy five in Las Vegas or some shit like that? I happen to know for a fact that making double that is not enough to make a living wage here. However, minimum wage jobs are just that. You take that job knowing it's a minimum wage job. And if you want to make more money, you have to work your ass off to move up the ladder. Right. That's what I did in retail, in fast food. You work your ass off. You become the assistant manager. Now you make $2 more than minimum wage. Then you become the shift manager and, you, you know, up and up and up. And if you don't have that forward movement, if you don't work hard and present yourself nicely and do what you need to do to make the company want to promote you, you're never going to get promoted. And I don't think you should be rewarded for not having ambition. I don't think you should get to make more than I make because you flip burgers and don't want to become a manager. Right. I there just think go. that minimum wage, like if you want to, you know, have nice things, then of course you need to work harder and, you know, go to school and better yourself and get, you know, better careers. But if you just want to exist, if you just want to live and pay your rent mm -hmm. and pay for food, you should absolutely be able to live off of a minimum wage job because as, there are so yes, many. As a I single individual. You should be, yeah. I don't think that you should be able to, you know, have fancy cars and, you know, like, I don't think it should be ridiculous. Right. I don't think you should make more as a fast food worker than somebody that works at, you know, a more established job. That's not what I'm saying. The minimum wage should absolutely be raised to let people at least exist, be right. able to pay their own rent, be able to, you know, if you can't have a car, at least, have, you know, buy a bus, Get a bus pass. pass. Like, right. and pay for food. Like, there's no reason that you shouldn't people be get so able comfortable, to though. live, pay electricity, pay, you know, for phone, pay, you know, just live, exist. But you can't. Like, people have to have roommates. People have to, you know, and I get that that's, you know, a thing, but it's also dangerous nowadays. Like, it's not as easy as it used to be to, you know, find good people. And it's not like you can go down job. to the secretary pool down at the manpower and just pull up three right. really nice people to go get a roommate with. Right. You, just know. <laughs> you can. You just don't know it. <laughs> I mean, I just think that you should. There's no reason if you work, you know, if you get up every day and you go work mm -hmm. for someone. Whether no matter what it is, even the oh. lowest level job that you should be able to. That's pay true. for yourself. Right. And but, like, when, I mean, with that being said, until those changes are made, I mean, I agree. And everybody, if you're working 40 hours, I agree. You should be able to live. You should be able to pay your bills. You know, I'm not saying don't give people more. I, I absolutely agree with that. And I, I agree. I mean, I lived in San Diego on six fifty an hour when I first moved there. And but you live a cardboard box on the corner? Trust me. <laughs> trust me. I lived in a, a part of town and, and took a bus to a trolley and then walked three blocks in the worst part of town to get to work. But it's what I did. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't just, you know, I, I just felt like I needed to find a way to to better myself because I didn't like being in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so I was very motivated and I was very driven. And and I, like I don't though. have a college like degree. Struggle. I don't. I worked up to where I'm at. And, um, and, and I started it at the bottom and I had no problem 
doing so because I always had that ambition and drive. So yeah, I you, never let that hold me back. Yeah, you know, but, you but, you you know. More to you than that. You're right, Sasha. The the people who like the struggle. It's not that they like the struggle. What they like is they they are the entitled generation who think that they should be able to just right. wake right. up in the morning right. and get a paycheck in the mail and they shouldn't have to do shit for it. Right. Yeah. And, and those and, are the and same ones. ones that live above their means and get the new phone that comes out and the new game that comes out and but they can't pay their rent but they want a higher Pay. Yeah, they got every gaming system known to man, exactly. but they Why live in a shithole. Why don't you sell those games? And they they live in a little one-bedroom rat hole down in Hendertucky. And those are probably the same right. people standing outside <laughs> trying to get a higher minimum wage. Usually they I are. Mean, I just, I, you know, my whole thing is, is that I'm, I think that I totally agree. People that work at McDonald's should not be paid more than like office staff or, or there, there's no like, pay should be based on you know qualifications and your level of you know mm-hmm. work and mcdonald's fast food work is an entry level position it should be paid entry level wages but at the same time we have to be able to exist you right know? but until that happens until that change can be implemented and the government can make those changes um and you know raise minimum wage to whatever's considered a, a livable wage in the meantime, there's two choices. What do you do? Do you, you know, sit there and, and give in? Oh, well, give me, in I and can't like, make enough well, money. what do I do? Or do you say, Change your where occupation. can I go from here? What can I do now? You know, well, what's those the people next that stop? are, you know, protesting for McDonald's to <laughs> raise their their wages should be <laughs> protesting for, you know, the state to wait to raise its you know, minimum, wage. minimum wage. Right. McDonald's because isn't going just, to go to fifteen dollars an hour. No, I'm I, just telling that. you right now, my burger is going to taste the same whether you made it or a robot made it. I don't right. give up. In but. New York, in New York, I think they pay like almost fifteen dollars an hour. New, well, in New York's, a, I mean, New York is definitely a lot different from Las Vegas as far as you know. Even a cardboard box there is like three thousand a right, month. Right. <laughs> so it's the but same thing if they you go look up at to it like, as they don't uh, they don't understand out here. They're like, well, out there, right? That's the same the thing. Like if you go to Northern California. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's right. the same That's thing. Like from, a cardboard so. box is like what four thousand a month there, yeah. and you know, and groceries are how really much? Small town so. in Weed, California, where they just had that big bulls fire, and yeah. their their cost of living is extremely high, and we right. have a population of like three thousand people, twenty five hundred. Right. So yep. And so, and most of those jobs in in those very special markets, most of those jobs definitely do adjust for the cost of the cost yeah. of wage, like. There are some markets that don't, for example, Southern California, I don't necessarily feel that they um, pay accordingly to the cost of living there because I, I know what it's like to live in Southern California and I know what salary looks like, you know, in that market. That's probably one of the few markets that I really don't think adjust as well as others. But Northern California companies know, you know, yeah, the, you have to pay. You have to pay because in somebody's a mill paying. Or, or the fire department, then right. you're really not making any money or work for an apartment complex or it's hard to live out there. I think so. it's well, hard to live if you're not, if you, <laughs> if places aren't paying a you know, because that's the thing. If minimum wage goes up in places, so does the wages for other jobs. You know, True, they, they right. make it, you know. Well, and that's what ink spot but, stories say. If minimum wages moves up, what about the companies that aren't paying minimum wage? Should they all have to raise their wages? Yeah. How many companies are going to go out of business if that happens as well? Lots like these companies. small that's true. companies. I, they, I, they can't afford the $14 an hour. Right, the $14, $15 an hour. I'd I need mean, to get a pay raise just to go to minimum wage if right, they did it to they, that much. But would that, <laughs> right. but would that even happen if you were at... Let's just say you're at what's what minimum wage will be raised to. Let's just, I'm just throwing out fifteen dollars mm-hmm. for an example. Let's say you're at fifteen, and now they raise raise um, fast food workers to fifteen, and now you're going well. I'm working my ass off here. Why don't I? Not saying they don't work hard in fast food because I, I get it. I've been in fast food. They work you hard. You know, but... so why don't I just go flip some burgers instead of coming in every day and and doing what I do? Maybe I'll get a more flexible schedule at McDonald's right. because it's paying the same. Hell no, I would never go. I would never go down to a minimum wage position at a place like that. If it meant that I made minimum wage and worked in my office job, I would stay in my office job just because I'm a lazy fat bitch. 
No, I'm not really. But I've paid my dues. I worked those jobs. I flipped the burgers. I hung up the shirts. I dealt with asshole customers at the cash wrap. I had burgers thrown on me. I had well, the truth is, is you know, that, crazy that, people run out of my store trying to steal stuff out of the retail locations wages, I worked at. Wages Ross. go into the end user. <laughs> you know, the end user pays for the wages. So every, the cost of everything will go up. Mm-hmm. That's the problem with our, our world. <laughs> like... You know, that's how economics pay, work. If right. it costs more to produce the item, the right. item must cost more right. because, uh, to be sold. Uh, the people that are producing are not going to take a pay cut. Or the people that are, you know, the owners, they're not going to take, you know, less money because they have to pay their employees more. So they're going to pass that expense on to the end user. And, of course, that makes the cost of living go up. So it's really a fucked up, you know, circle. Like There are, but it, if you think about it... How? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> we got the door open. You can hear the other radio stations. But it, it, if you think about it, you know how many people who are, how many people stay stuck in that? I'm just going back to the fries because I freaking love fries, and that's all I'm thinking about is <laughs> like getting some McDonald's fries. But um, how many people who are, you know, really ambitious and really driven and how many really end up staying in that role? I mean, what, being very real, if you have somebody who is, you know, always at work or, or early, you know, always there on time, they give it 110%, if they have goals that they have to meet, whether it's, you know, making 3,000 fries an hour or whatever, how many people really just fries. really just stay in that role? You don't see it that much. No. It might be the people who are a little bit less driven who who do kind of end up staying a little bit stagnant and then in that case well what can i do to what can i do to fix that and take that next step i know a guy who's worked for an international retail company for over 10 years now in the same position and that is at an entry-level position and that is simply because he doesn't want to be a manager right he doesn't want the responsibility he doesn't care about the pay he pays his bills with what he's got that's it. That's it. He doesn't want to be more ambitious. And there's plenty of people like that. And as long as they're doing their job and showing up, that's fine. But when you have the people who just, you know, kind of barely make it to work on time, fuck up my order every time I go to McDonald's, you know, give you attitude at the drive something. Let, let me tell you something, sweetheart. If you think you are worth more, you need to portray that you are worth more. And that does not mean that you get to treat me like a piece of shit because I'm the end user. As a matter of fact, you should be trying to lick my butthole clean. <laughs> right. And then you will totally deserve the $16 an hour. I mean, I used to I used to train and supervise in a call center many years ago. Oh, and so, <laughs> so, but I walked in as a CSR and I worked my way up. I worked yeah. in, I, I walked mm-hmm. in as the person with the headset on answering the calls. And I, you know, and I'm like, well, I, I don't want to get... stay in this. And, this and I moved myself Jones. up. Um, but you would get the people, you can absolutely tell, you get the people who are very ambitious and very driven. And you know what? They're going to move up. It may not be at, on the timeline that they want, but they are going to move up. There's a lot of different opportunities for growth, whether it's within the company, whether it's they take these skills and go to another company and, and you know, improve themselves. But it's going to happen. But I would have the, the reps who were not the best. I mean, their their stats weren't great. Their, you know, their calls, they would be rude. We'd get complaints. They'd show up and push the clock and, you know, and show up later or not at all, and and maybe they didn't move up as quickly as they had hoped. I wonder you... if uh, if um, minimum wage went up, if if people that had nonprofit jobs, if they're they would lose a lot of jobs with nonprofit workers, because I know that when minimum wage went up last time, my mom she was a director at an abused women's shelter, mm-hmm. and they totally did pay cuts when it went up the last time right. and she's been working abused women's shelter 10 20 years 20 years now and she lost her job and she's 50 years old and it took her two years to find a new job right so it's like you know when, once that goes down all those people that really put in a lot of work and a lot of time and care and you know into those nonprofits. and that jobs. age and and that that's a whole nother story that yeah. i could get into forever with which i won't but she has her bachelor's um, degree her but bachelor's yeah you have many skilled individuals who are older um, who are older and a little bit more of the mature workforce mm. and that's exactly what happened to them when the it's recession sad. hit and they lost their jobs it was the hardest for them to find jobs but Just how many of them working how many of them went to mcdonald's 
took the fry cook job and then once things that's turned exactly around what she did got that's back exactly out what she did she went and got a that's job what you do. working at a casino you know she just worked mm-hmm. the cage and she was like this is just so different then she got a job working at mad mothers against drunk driving and then she's like no but i'm gonna still try and i'm still gonna apply at these these abused women's shelters because this is what i love and she's got a very decent job now right. so she well, got she, she was able to, to get back in but she didn't right. sit back and go what am I going to do? Woe is me. Is I can't. She yeah, this is my life. She relocated and... herself and said, I'm not going to sit here and take these low end jobs. That's, that's where I started. I'm not doing it. And she moved. That's that's what I did. I got, I worked for a, a carpet installation company. I was the inventory control manager and the uh, liaison with the installers and all that. Really great job. Really great pay. Recession hit. People aren't buying new carpet. I got my job cut because they decided right. that. The manager could do all of my job, too. They didn't need to pay somebody. I was out of work for a year. Beating feet, playing down the, the laying down my resume on everyone who would take it. And finally got a, a job that worked okay, and I hated it, but it paid the bills. And right. then I got my job that I have now, and that's how it's supposed to be. Like yeah, That's it. My, my own up. mother lived um, in Southern California and worked at a job. She had been there forever. She made a shit ton of money. Like I used to joke with her, like, do they walk in your office and just drop pile of cash, piles of cash on your yeah, desk? Same. I mean, they. She had stock options. She all of this. She made a shit ton of. She used to travel to Jamaica twice a year. She was just like, <laughs> let me just buy you this and this. She made a shit ton of That's money. Bottom line. Seems. And so when, um, when she lost that job, the company closed there and they relocated it when the whole you know, recession hit and they're like, this market's a little too expensive for us. And they moved. And now here she is, same thing in her fifties and was like, what am I gonna now do? what do I, at first she was like, oh, I'm going to find a ton of jobs and make the yep. same money and no big deal. And then a year goes by of looking and then a little longer and then she had no choice but to move out here. And then, you know, and then she's like, oh, you know, she reaches the point where like, oh, $11 an hour. Let's do this. Like this yeah, is kind of exciting. Went, like I'm very excited to have a full time job. Making like twenty six dollars mm-hmm. an hour. She made all the way down to eleven, and she was mm-hmm. just like, "What the?" And then when she she went to another job, and it was like nine dollars an hour. She's like, "How do people live like this?" Right. She was. But she didn't stay at that. She, no, she, she didn't, didn't she say. Pushed, she said, "You know what? I'm gonna live on two hundred dollars a week or a week, four hundred dollars a paycheck." She's like, "I gotta do what I gotta do. If I gotta, mm-hmm. you know, get a roommate or have one of my kids move in or whatever." She didn't stop, and then she, she changed the whole life around. Moved all the way away from her family. There's nobody that lives with, her, you know, right. maybe one person that she knows. And she's like, I don't care. She's like, I am doing. I've raised five kids. I've I worked my ass off to have this no, this knowledge of the field that she's in. And she's like, I'm not gonna give up. And just lo and behold, three interviews later, and she got this job. And she's only she's not only, but she's down. She's making nineteen dollars an hour. But she's like, you know what? I know that I can get back up. Right. To exactly. So and... she built herself back up. Now is nine dollars an hour a livable wage? No. No. She you made can't it happen. Nine dollars an hour, but she made it work, and she didn't just about it. She, we settle lived in, for we lived it. Right. About it, and it's pretty. Pretty cheap to live there. You can get a two bedroom for four hundred dollars a month, or yeah. you know, so like moving to Reno. But it's just, it's in, not in a good not in a good neighborhood. But she right. she was scared shitless. But she did what she had to do. Like it was a two bedroom, really 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 small. But it was like four four fifty. It was in a bad area. But she was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. You know. I mean, we we did the same when we were in um when we were in San Diego, and when I made six fifty an hour, we're like, well. It's kind of not a good neighborhood, but uh, it's what we can afford, and right. so you gotta do what you got to do. You know, you let's make it happen. To your, adjust to your uh, for dinner, name. rice and chicken. There you go. <laughs> she had for dinner. My mom rice was like, and chicken. she had never eaten so much ramen noodle soup right. ever, and she used to tell us even a little. Uh... Chicken's pricey. getting a little spicy. Like yeah. rice and beans, you know. Yeah, we had, it's we cheaper to be a vegetarian these days. I'm just saying. Right. You we pick something up in, really a, in, the, in, the, in a field. Like. We lived by a 99 um, cent Chinese food place. <laughs> and so I'm telling you all the time, we're like, what's for dinner? 99 Chinese. cent Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm very... <sighs> uh, I, haven't wor- I, I haven't worked for another company since, <laughs> since like 2007, right? That was the last time I had a corporate job. And um, now I refuse to work for somebody else. Like, <laughs> I, 
in some points, sometimes of the month, you know, some months it's like barely fucking making it b- barely if that like but at the same time like i know the potential and you know i know that i work hard and i know that um i will do whatever i have to do to make things happen mm-hmm. and so i know i get through it because i know that it's not going to last forever like this is just one of those times and it's it's going to be fine and we're, we're going to get past it and it's going to be better but right now there shall be no, you know, extra smooth toilet paper. <laughs> and <laughs> we're going back to suave and you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to start using the dollar store eyeliner. Right? <laughs> so it's, you know, you, you do, you make adjustments and do what you have to do. But I do think that everybody has the right to exist on their own, Indeed. like independently. Hallelujah, sister. On that note, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll do ketchups, bra shots. I don't know. What else do you guys want to do? Oh, and let's talk about Delilah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that fucking prank. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> 